Hey BioTeam, uh, so we've talked recently about how bacteria have the ability to take in DNA uh, through horizontal gene transfer. And we talked too about how humans are able to harness this fact to do a form of bacterial farming in which they get bacteria to make human proteins uh, for humans that can't make those proteins for themselves. So this video focuses on that process, on how a, a genetic engineer would accomplish that, how they would get a bacteria cell to start making human proteins. And so let's look at an example here. Let's say that uh, we want to make uh, human growth hormone uh, for people that can't make human growth hormone for themselves. Well, the first thing that a genetic engineer would do is they would take uh, a human chromosome uh, containing the gene for human growth hormone, and they would use something called a restriction enzyme basically to uh, cut the gene uh, from the chromosome. Uh, then they would use the enzyme ligase uh, to add that gene into a bacterial plasmid. And you guys uh, learned about ligase already. Uh, that's the, the enzyme that stitches together the Okazaki fragments uh, during DNA replication. And it's used here to stitch together uh, these pieces of DNA into a plasmid. Uh, after this plasmid's been formed, uh, the genetic engineers will take the plasmid and put it into a culture. Uh, here we've got a test tube uh, with uh, bacteria cells. Uh, then to get these bacteria to take in the plasmid, uh, genetic engineers will heat uh, the bacteria, which kind of opens up pores in their cell membranes and their cell walls. And with any luck, uh, a few of the bacteria will take up the plasmid. So then once this has happened, to start the farming process, uh, genetic engineers will place the bacteria uh, onto a gel plate, uh, often called an agar plate. Um, but that gel plate will contain sugar so that the bacteria are able to grow and divide through binary fission. The idea being that the bacteria that have the plasmid, as they're going and dividing, will be making that human growth hormone. Now the only problem with this setup, uh, as described right here, is that uh, not all of the bacteria uh, will be making the human growth hormone, and as the bacteria grow and divide, uh, the genetic engineers would have a hard time telling which of the bacteria are making the hormone that they want. And it's possible that the bacteria that received the gene for building the hormone will actually get outcompeted by uh, these other bacteria because a human growth hormone isn't super useful for a bacteria cell. Uh, so what genetic engineers can do to fix this problem is at the beginning of this process, they can add a second gene to the plasmid uh, that would give a bacteria cell uh, resistance to antibiotics. Uh, for instance, resistance to ampicillin. Uh, now that might sound strange to, to give bacteria uh, resistance to antibiotics. Generally we uh, think of antibiotic resistance bacteria as a really bad thing, as bacteria that are really hard to treat and kill. Um, but the idea is if we give bacteria a resistance to an antibiotic, well then when we run through our process by transforming the bacteria and getting them to uptake uh, the plasmid, now, instead of plating them on just a regular old petri dish, what we can do is we can put the bacteria onto a dish that contains antibiotics. This way, when we add our bacteria into the gel plate now, all of the bacteria that did not receive the plasmid uh, will be killed by the antibiotic. Uh, and the bacteria that did receive the plasmid uh, will be able to survive, grow, and reproduce. Uh, in the process producing the human growth hormone that we want them to. And so biologists know now that whatever bacteria end up growing in the petri dish must have taken up the plasmid, because if they didn't take up the plasmid, they would have been killed off. So we call this second gene uh, that we added to the plasmid a marker gene, okay? because it, it, in essence, marked the bacteria uh, that received the plasmid and received the gene for human growth hormone that the biologists were actually trying to produce. So uh, there's a bunch of different marker genes uh, that you can mark a plasmid with. Some marker genes, like in our example, give resistance to certain antibiotics. Uh, but other marker genes can produce visible color change. Uh, so one common type of uh, this type of marker uh, would be a gene for green fluorescent protein, or GFP. So this gene was actually taken from a bioluminescent jellyfish, and by giving it to bacteria, bacteria can produce a protein that allows them to glow under uh, fluorescent lighting. Uh, but that's it. At this point, you guys have some practice problems. Uh, we'll see you next class.